Hey bookworms, I am so sorry. I know you guys have just looked at my Stephen King collection thus far, but when I went to my shelf, I saw I had a totally forgot to add these books. So it's just three more books that I have of Stephen King. So this is going to be like a Stephen King part two of what I have thus far. So let's just quickly run through it. I have Black House by Stephen King and Peter Strauss. Straub. Straub. Um, oh, I got this one from Goodwill. I never, I haven't read this one either. This one's a chunker too. It's like, well, no, it's like 625 pages. 20 years ago, a boy named Jack Sawyer traveled to a parallel universe called, ter called the Territories to save his mother and her Territories twinner from an agonizing death that would have brought catalysm to the other world. Now Jack is a retired Los Angeles homicide detective living in the nearly non-existent hamlet of Tamarack, Wisconsin. He has no recollection of his adventures in the territories and was compelled to leave the police force when an odd happenstance event threatened to awaken those memories. When a series of gruesome murders occur in western Wisconsin that are reminiscent of those committed several decades ago by a madman named Albert Fish, the killer is dubbed the Fisherman. And Jack's buddy, the local chief of police, police, begs Jack to help the inexperienced force find him. But are these new killings merely the work of a disturbed individual, or has mysterious and malignant force been unleashed in this quiet town? What causes Jack's inexplicable waking dreams if that is what they are, are robin's eggs and red feathers. It's almost as if someone is trying to tell him something. As this cryptic message becomes increasingly impossible to ignore, Jack is drawn back to the territories and to his own hidden past, where he may find the sole strength to enter a terrifying house at the end of a deserted tract of forest, there to encounter the obscene and ferocious evils sheltered within it. Ooh. So, if you could see see up here this is the black house I don't want to live there I I can't believe I ever got these books I was just like oh no so yeah then we got Duma Key and look at this cover look at this cover back is gorgeous too um, nothing too pretty too fancy I heard a lot about Duma Key and I haven't read it. So it says, no more than a dark pencil line on a blank page, a horizon line maybe, but also slot for blackness to pour through. A terrible construction site, construction, a terrible construction site accident takes Edgar Fremantle's right arm and scrambles his memory in his mind, leaving him with little but rage as he begins the ordeal of rehabilitation. Sorry, guys, my other video had stopped saved. A marriage that produced two lovely daughters suddenly ends and Edgar begins to wish he hadn't survived the, in the injuries that could have killed him. He was out. His psychologist, Dr. Kamen, suggests a geographic cure, a new life distant from the Twin Cities and the building business Edgar grew from scratch, and Carmen suggests something else. Edgar, does anything make you happy? I used to sketch. Take it up again. You need hedges. Hedges against a night. Edgar leaves Minnesota for a rented house on Duma Key, a stunningly beautiful, early undeveloped splinter of the Florida coast. The sun setting into the Gulf of Mexico and tidal rattling of shells on the beach call out to him, and Edgar draws. A visit from Ilse, the daughter he dotes on, starts his movement out of solitude. He meets a kindred spirit in Wireman. A man reluctant to reveal his own wounds, and then Elizabeth Eastlake, a sick old woman whose roots are tangled deep in Dumaki. Now Edgar paints, sometimes feverishly, his exploding talent, both a wonder and a weapon. Many of his paintings have a power that cannot be controlled. When Elizabeth's past unfold and the ghosts of her childhood begin to appear, the damage of which they are incapable is truly devastating. The tenacity, whoops, tenacity of love the perils of creativity, the mysteries of memory, and the nature of the supernatural. Stephen King gives us a novel as fascinating as it is gripping and terrifying. <sighs> These ghosts, man. I'm telling you. But this is gorgeous. And I think this is something that, like, the main character probably painted. Since that's probably where he is. 
Also, I didn't get a chance to look at the... Oh, okay. So, that's for um, the Black Held. And then the last book is Everything Eventuals. <laughs> you see, I got it for $3. I need to take that off. Please don't tear. Please don't tear. Um, I hate prices on books, on the front of books anyway. It just takes so much from the cover. Okay. Please just come off normally. All right. So, Everything Eventuals, which is 14 Dark Tales by Stephen King. Uh, this is some short stories. Um, yeah. Dark short stories of that. 415 pages. But this cover is gorgeous. Check it out. Let me give you a close-up. Oh, yes. The back is where it gets real, okay? I love these covers. And nothing spectacular. Okay, guys, so that is literally all of my Stephen King books. I'm sorry that it took, like, another seven minutes, but I wanted to show everything that I had of Stephen King. And, yeah, so that is all for now. I will see you guys tomorrow on Hump Day. As always, be blessed. Happy reading. Hit me up um, on all of my... Uh, portals, everything, social media. Oh, Snapchat me, guys. I'm loving Snapchat. <laughs> I am Dr. underscore K Diggs. D-R underscore K D-I-G-G-S. Definitely add me on Snapchat and let's chat. All right, guys. I will see you soon. As always, be blessed. Happy reading and peace.